Welcome to the Pod Doctors. I'm Dr. Damian Dauphine, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Rafi Hussein. And today, Wednesday, May 26th, uh, we're going to talk about Haloma Molly, which is an annoying skin lesion that we see frequently, and that I think has a pretty big, a uh, pretty big misconception of why it occurs and and. Um, why it's not just a skin lesion. Yeah, and the worst part about them is it's so small, but it's so painful. Oh, yeah. You never find a patient that's like, oh, yeah, hey, can you check this out while I'm here? It's mm-hmm. always like, this, this is, is killing, killing me. <laughs> Even though they'll have, like, the biggest going near the, the yeah. craziest flat foot or whatever, they'll have, like, this tiny little spot, and it's the most excruciating thing. It, 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 is, it is a callus that is literally sitting on a sensory nerve. Yeah. And, and that's what makes it so painful. So here's a, a general idea of corns and callus that we typically see on the foot. You know, see them on the toes, you'll see them uh, under your foot, you'll see them, you know, on the sides uh, of your foot. But the Holoma mole is actually a soft corn uh, between your toes. Most other corns and calluses are hard. Uh, the reason it's soft is just pretty much because of moisture retention there. Sure. Yeah, and it's just between your toes. You know, your toes tend to hold a little bit more moisture. Um, but what happens is that, that that pressure between those two toes uh, causes that corn, you know, um, things that incite this, you know, foot structure, uh, tight shoe gear, um, cleats, uh, you know, a lot of athletes will have them. Commonly you see it in people who just simply have that fifth toe that likes to underlap the yeah. fourth toe. <clears throat> so the fourth toe's riding it. <clears throat> so here's some, uh, some pictures. Um, Here's what it classically looks like. It'll be either on the side of the fifth toe or on the side of the fourth toe. It'll pick one side. Classically, I see them on the fifth toe most often. Occasionally, you'll see callus on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's a long-standing one. Right, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be the fifth and fourth toe. Uh, here's one that's a, uh, what is that, your, your third and fourth toe. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a pinch callus between those two toes. Um, so, so what I think people need to understand is this is an underlying bony problem. Yes. And that everything that we do to address the callus is palliative, meaning it's not definitive, it's not going to change this. So you can maintain these. Yeah, you, by dealing you, with the you shave them down, you use your urea or salicylic mm-hmm. acids. And... You can use a sleeve, a silicone sleeve to protect it, but yeah, until you address the bone, you're, you're not going to have any definitive correction. Yeah, the old school treatment for these was to use lamsel. They used to get like that, that little, yeah. uh, the, you know, old school. You Just pat pull off, Yeah, make a little donut and stuck it between your toes, and there you go. And the trick to that is, I mean, I have patients that are doing it with um, cotton balls nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll, they'll take it and they'll make it into a donut. And the trick was if the, the callus or corn or whatever is on, uh, you know, the distal tip, put that cushion behind it. Don't put it directly over that corn area because it's only going to put more pressure mm-hmm. on that corn. Um, but you actually want to offload that area. That's why those little um, uh, donut pads that you can stick on there work really good because you're offloading the area. Um, but yeah, here, uh, let's see. Yeah, here, here's a good example of what it looks like clinically uh, and the x-ray form. So you'll have that little corn there and you kind of look for where it's causing that pain. This I think they put a staple between there in this picture. Some sort of marker. Yeah, I use yeah. like a paper clip typically. Sure. Um, but yeah, and you kind of determine what two bones are um, abutting against one another. And each time uh, it can be different. Classically, you know, this is your most classic um, model. And I don't know if you noticed, but this is a patient who has synphalangism. So they never had a separation between their, their oh, yeah. distal and their middle phalanx. And I, and I think this is clearly more common in patients like that because yeah. their toes are stiffer. Yeah. So their fifth toe is stiffer. So it can't get out of the way, it's tucked under the fourth, and that's a classic presentation. Yeah, those two bony prominences are physically pinching up against one another. Right. You know, um, super tender, super painful. So you're supposed to have three bones in all in your lesser toes, and in this patient, the, the, the last bone and the middle bone never separated. It's a pretty common yeah. uh, finding, coincidental finding. It's not necessarily related to pathology, but in this case, I believe it is because yeah. it makes the toe stiffer yeah, and just un- unable to get out of the way. Here's a different example. Here's where it's a little bit more distal. And you, you can, can see that see. little spur. Yeah. 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 It pushes up against their... Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, and that tiny little callus can literally bring people to their knees yeah. when it gets irritable. And yeah. you're like, how in the heck can that silly little callus cause that much trouble? But you're yeah, like, I think can. there's a needle in there or yeah. a piece of glass. I, I think don't... it's the devil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, they uh, they really think it's it's um, everything but a bony problem. 
I've actually had patients ask me just to take the toe off. <laughs> Thankfully, we have alternative <laughs> methods of treatment besides amputation. <laughs> I've been um, dealing with this for years. Yeah, can you just damn thing can, Am I allowed to just have this toe removed? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yes, we can do that. Do we not do that most of the time? Yeah. Thankfully, we were able to find an alternative. So here's here's. And the, again, look that patient symphalangism. No distal oh, yeah. and middle phalanx. Yeah, I didn't even pay attention. So it's to that. it's really I think that's a main contributor. So here's what's happened. This is my patient. Uh, I, I happened to record the surgery for this. So I thought this would be an interesting case. That she was getting a pinch callus between these two points here, um, and in her case, the callus was more on the fourth digit. Um, but uh, yeah, painful. We tried you know shaving it down and doing the spacers. Uh, nothing worked, and she was like, yeah, I just want this corrected. Um, so my logic for treatment for this is to, one, um, shave down this prominence and shorten this toe and um, pretty much make that toe a little bit more floppy. Right. And we're, we're decompressing it, maybe shifting it maybe two, three millimeters shorter. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you're taking the pressure Just off. Just making it more flexible so it can stay out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Do, you ever, do you ever do a little skin plasty to derotate it? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did the elliptical. Yep, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, let's double speed this because... So here, I'm just kind of going in. I already did the ellipse on this. So I should have left that in there. But, but you're, um, you're freeing up the joint. Yeah, I'm yeah. literally uh, freeing up that uh, that joint, that little fifth toe joint. Cool. I'm just freeing that up. In so this can... case, the only joint in her fifth toe. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> literally the only joint. Yeah. So here, I'm like... So you're releasing the ligaments, yeah. the collateral ligaments there, and allowing you to get to the, to the head of the proximal phalanx. Yeah, your joint has multiple ligaments holding that all together. So what we're trying to do is free it up. I can see the head, shorten it, and uh, resect it out. So here, let's jump ahead. Too far. Oops, how long did we need to dissect that out? Oh, all right, so now I'm starting. So I, I typically, you know, I like to work in sections, Dissect, uh, dissection, osteotomy, fixation, you know, just the way my mind works. Sure. So uh, I'm dissecting that out. Here you can actually see, it was a, a good uh, view of um, the extensor tendon. Yep. So I'm, I'm going on the lateral side of that extensor tendon where you kind of have a little canopy that kind of attaches to it. So... Um, and you can create a soft tissue envelope around the bony prominence. Yeah. Yeah, expose that. Do you like to burr these off? With I actually burr took the you... small saw to it, the small yeah. saw. Um, burr is good. Uh, depends on how big it is. If I really wanted to get a good uh, amount of resection or if it was like a pinpoint thing, it just kind of determines. I've used reciprocating wraps uh, also. Mm -hmm. um, but in the, this case... The, the rotating burr, rotary burrs can tear up your soft tissue sometimes without yeah. protecting them with... Uh, it, it's a tight little spot to be operating in. So I like, I like the saw too. I think you do Yeah, They have there. the real, real small saw. Look at that. I mean, yeah. tiny. You can just buzz that guy right off. Yep, there you go. Nice. I get a small little wafer out of there. We're not trying to take too much off of there. Um, a small little wafer, and then... Um, you can just run through the rest if you need to. Yeah, or... yeah. And you'll see, I'll, I'll do that for the, the fifth toe a little bit, just to um, reshape it a little bit. Right. Tiny. Look at that. I mean, it's like a little oyster pearl. Like yeah. Super small. But that's... Yeah, that, that's what it takes. You get, And I think... Addressing this on both sides of the problem is far more effective long term. You're yeah. you're hedging your bets. The last thing I want to do is do surgery and then have to do surgery again to fix a problem that we were originally doing surgery for. Sure. You know. Nobody likes to redo their own work. Yeah. Yep. Let's see how long it's bad is. for business. So that's good. I think that's a very proactive approach. Now you're getting the head out. And these surgeries are, are quick. I mean, the recovery on this is only soft tissue. Yeah. Are I tell patients two weeks because yeah. it's just the stitches. You, you, so yeah. Once the stitches are healed, your incisions, yeah, once the stitches are out, your incisions healed, you're good to go. Yeah. I usually have them in like the surgical boot for, I don't know, roughly. Um, so I chopped out. I was putting bone wax on there for a bit. Um, so we put bone wax on there so it doesn't uh, grow out or solidify. Um, but then I felt the prominence while I was putting it on there. I was like, I need to get that lip off there. That a little more. Um, but yeah, the, the bone wax purpose is to cover up any of those tiny little holes that the bony um, sponge like. Uh, um, so you're trying to prevent uh, heterotrophic bone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So heterotrophic bone would be the term for 
bone that can grow is sort of an exuberant healing process that yeah. can cause bone to grow uh, kind of in a mass yeah, at like the end bone of a bone that's cut. Yeah. yeah. And that, that can end up causing the same problem all over again. So, yeah, the, there are there different yeah. techniques, but bone wax is one of them to prevent that. So here's my before. You can kind of see the prominences. And this is you kind of pointed to the areas I really focus on correcting. Right. You can kind of see the before and after. The nice. little bump's gone. And then here was that little prominence I took out at the end, but shortened it off. And so and now that toe's floppy enough that it's unlikely to get tethered into that fourth toe. Yeah. Super simple, super effective. And like we said, the recovery is soft tissue only. I think my patients on average are in the boot for about three weeks max, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then after that um, uh, phase off. Uh, surgical shoe or boot, I, you know, I have a preference for, I like my boots. I think they're so much easier to walk in. Sure. I know you like your shoes, um, but recovery is, is, is only, you know, it's, it's for the dressing, honestly. Right. And so you don't pop those stitches. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, super simple, super effective uh, surgery. And, um, you know, it's in and out one day. Uh, for people who have, you know, tried the conservative, tried their toe spaces, tried their, you know, ureas or salicylic acids or um, hyaluronic acids or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to help soften them up. But it's a bony problem. Uh, if your conservative therapy isn't working, there is a solution for these. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, we have just talked about where candy corn comes from. Um, <laughs> thank God that's not the case. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, we, um, we have, I think, given a pretty good uh, description of Holomawali and the soft corn problems um, that we see in the office and how they are truly a bony issue. Uh, gone through some of the conservative and the surgical options. I think that was a nice discussion. So hopefully if you find that you are struggling from one of these, that you'll understand now that it may be a bony issue that can be addressed surgically and, and it's a pretty quick recovery. Yeah. It doesn't require a great deal of immobilization. It doesn't require cast crutches or anything like that. So certainly something we can help you with. Uh, thanks, Dr. Hussein. That was fantastic. And um, we will see you next time on The Pod Doctors.